I'd like to invite Nina Souza up to lead us in the pledge. Nina, you probably can go right there and turn on the microphone. Right, yeah, right there, perfect. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Nina. All right. We'll open the floor for comments by visitors. If there's any comments by visitors, please um, step up and state your address. We'd be happy to hear you. All right, seeing none, we'll move to the consent calendar. What's the wish of the board to adopt the consent calendar? I move to adopt the consent calendar as presented. Second. Second that. Oh. All right, any discussion about any items on the consent calendar? Minutes, okay. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right, consent calendar is adopted. Moving to um, the reports. There is no student representative report. Um, so we'll move to the superintendent's report. I have a very brief report. Um, so I wish to publicly thank uh, the Summers of School Board and the City Council for unanimously approving the supplemental appropriation of unanticipated state adequacy funds in the amount of $1,953,000, $953,394. Uh, I appreciate the City Council listening closely to the feedback it received from the citizens who spoke at the public hearing on this matter before the vote by the council members uh, that took place. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Austin, for your, your vote. Um, it's nice to see the city council and the school board on the same page in supporting public education. I did listen closely to the comments of um, the city council and, and took them to heart, and um, um, we will certainly continue to take a look at how those funds are gonna be expended. So it was great feedback, and I did appreciate Councillor Pepperin's uh, comment about it's a process and that's exactly what took place it's a process so thank you um, I also want to let folks know it's a tremendous boost to the school district um, it's great for our students uh, our faculty and staff as well as the city of Summersworth so I just wanted to say thank you everyone for supporting public education in Summersworth thank you so much so that's my report <laughs> Good segue into um, the City Council update Councillor Austin Thank you, Madam Chair, and I'll just piggyback on that. Um, obviously, we did approve the supplemental appropriation last night, and I think the uh, the process worked the way the process should work. I think there was adequate time for debate and, and asking questions and getting clarifications, and in the end, um, we approved the appropriation exactly as you asked for it. So we're glad to have done that. And just remind everybody that uh, in a couple of weeks, we have an election coming up, so I would encourage everybody to come out and vote um, as you would. So thank you. And Councillor, just for um, like the school communication, for anything with um, public roadways and the lights and things like that, can I put a plug in to um, have an update as it pertains to the building and the streetway and the lights or anything like that coming your, our, you know, your way via committee or via council? that applies to the schools and the grounds, if there's an update there. Well, my understanding is that uh, every week there's a department heads meeting with the city manager that the superintendent yeah. is invited to, so that's where that kind of communication would happen. Okay, so no update on the, uh, that would be public I don't works. have any specific update okay. on anything. Okay, all right, good to know. Okay, moving on to our committee reports. Uh, budget and revenue, Councilor Marsh. Oh, I mean, board member Marsh, oh. sorry. Thanks. I threw you back to the Please, 90s. Please, thank you, yeah. <laughs> That was a 2000s, thank you. <laughs> School board was the 90s. Right. Okay, all right. Um, the, uh, the Budget and Revenue Committee met on October 17th. Uh, primarily, uh, we discussed the SAU 56 proposed fiscal year 2024-2025 budget, uh, proposed budget, um, which included a an estimated fiscal year 24-25 net budget plan increase of approximately 14.21 percent or $189,529 more than fiscal year 23-24. Uh, we do have a, uh, the next budget meeting is scheduled for uh, November 6th at 5.30. 
um, where we will com continue to discuss that. And on November 14th, there will be a school board uh, meeting, including a budget presentation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, building grounds and transportation, uh, board member Hackworth. So we have not had a meeting since our last, um, trying to set one up this, well, planning to set one up here soon. I believe there was a question for me though. Is it permissible to ask a question? Um, so for those of us who attended uh, last night's meeting, uh, there was an issue that came up um, questioning why weren't the roof leaks um, fixed sooner? I presume, or why, you know, why, does, why did the um, appropriation that, that we were voting on, or the city council and, and mayor were voting on last night, why it was going to the roofs, uh, the roof repairs when that should have been done sooner. And so to me, it just seemed logical that there was a backstory that didn't get out. And so I thought it would be appropriate if there was a backstory or an explanation as to why the roof hasn't been fixed yet that I asked the question. Yeah, I, can, so I can speak to that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the, the, some of the leaks that occurred was during the construction period over the summer at the high school. So there were leaks uh, when they were constructing, uh, doing work on the roofing system. Um, and to my knowledge, and, and Chris is here and I spoke to him earlier, there is no currently no leaks at, at the high school. There are some leaks at the elementary school in a couple of places. And I think that's related to the need to continue the project and finish that up. Um, so that's kind of the backstory on that, if that makes sense to you. Yes, thank okay. you. Thanks. And I think that we're in the works of arranging kind of a tour of the grounds in November um, of the, maybe the roof, if we if that's safe, whatever whatever piece. And I think that that's going to be in the, maybe at our next meeting, you can update us on that. Perfect. All right, educational programs and community outreach. Um, board member Wentworth. Thank you. Uh, our next educational programs and outreach meeting will be um, November 14th. Um, and at that meeting, it will be here at 545, um, well, in this building at the conference area. Um, and what is on the agenda is the school-based health clinic. And um, we'll have some folks um, from Goodwin uh, in attendance. So it should be a good meeting. Last but not least, our Policy Committee, Board Member Tierney. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Policy Committee met last night, October 23rd. Um, we tidied up a BEDG, uh, which is the policy regarding minutes, and we should have that ready for the Board um, for first reading next meeting um, in November. Uh, we spent the bulk of the time talking about IJOA, which is field trips and excursions. Um, <clears throat> big uh, talking point there, or the big, I should say, big point of discussion there, um, was the wording for chaperones. So right now, basically, if you're a chaperone, you have to ride the bus. There's no exceptions, nothing, no, no flexibility there. So we just talked about all the different sort of possible scenarios of, you know, what if this, what about that? Um, and we just sort of felt that it was important to still have um, the expectation be that the chaperone would ride the bus, but um, that we would allow for some, um, you know, there would be some room for flexibility there. So we played around with some language there. Um, and we also noted that there are a lot of <laughs> field trip permissions forms um, throughout the district, and they're not all necessarily the same. I mean, there is one form that all of the staff uses to ask for a field trip, but there's not one common form that's used um, to go home to parents, right, to get permission. Um, so the uh, administrators, the, yeah, the administration will be looking at that and trying to come up with a common form mm -hmm. that will be, um, uh, you know, used by, by everybody. Um, so that policy we're going to still just be um, looking at as a policy committee next time um, to, you know, to, um, kind of finalize that before we bring it to you guys. So that, um, that is that, and um, shoot, I did not write down the next meeting. Um, November 13th. November 13th, right. Five, I believe that's the next one. Yes, yep. that right before ed programs, yes, thank you. Yep. All right. We have some, all right, <coughs> perfect. Time for a presentation. Superintendent, would you like yeah, to? Yes, so I'd like to introduce our principal, 
Um, why am I spacing your name? Tebow. Tebow. I'll be all right. <laughs> it's, it's Tebow. Yeah. He's going to Tuesday. speak with other folks uh, on the um, on the topic of teen mental health first aid uh, program that's currently being uh, run at the Summers High School. So, Principal Chris Tebow, welcome. There you go. We we got there. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you. Yes, it is on. Thank you for for having me tonight. Uh, we we are we are very excited to be here. Um, I'm joined by uh, Suzanne Weedy uh, from Community Partners and the Dover Mental Health Alliance. Uh, she and I have worked on this project together now. This is probably going on four, maybe three, maybe three, three years, years, three years. Um, and so she's going to talk a little bit about what teen mental health first aid is. I'm going to share some context, and then you're going to hear from some of our students and staff, uh, just a quick video presentation. Uh, so this would have would have started the year we got back from COVID, uh, our school nurse uh, had gone to this conference about teen mental health first aid, and I had heard about it through Dover. Um, Dover, uh, I think, had been one of the first in the state to really adopt, is, is the first in the state to adopt this program. And the focus always, but particularly around the time we were returning from COVID, was how can we best support our students who are facing serious, significant, and for some of them, first time ever uh, mental health challenges. Uh, so I was able to attend like an initial training three years ago and the piece that really struck me about this was training our teens how to be mental health first responders, right? I love anytime we can empower our youth, our teenagers to take uh, a leadership role, to take ownership of their own mental health and teach them how to support um, their household, their friends, um, and how to be a better advocate for their own mental health. The reality is we know as adults, it, it's great when we're there and we can be supportive, but we are not always there. And in fact, teens are, are more likely to be in these sorts of crises when they're with each other, whether it's at a party or over someone's house, or, or sometimes I, I would say probably most often alone, right? So anything that we can do to give them the tools, the skills and the strategies to navigate their own mental health uh, and support their peers, uh, that's great for everyone. Um, so structurally, un unfortunately, even though it, it was awesome, it, it, it was not so easy. Um, the teen mental health program is, is very specific on what you need um, in terms of a framework to be able to bring the program in. So you need 10% of your staff trained. Um, you have to be able to offer this to sophomores. And so we had to change a few things around. Uh, and that took us about a year, over a year, to get to a place where we could even introduce this curriculum. Um, I'm really proud to say that uh, as of the end of September, uh, one half of our 10th grade has now received teen mental health first aid training with the other half coming in semester two. So we have the schedule, we have the, the, the courses, we have the resources, uh, and I'm hopeful and really excited for this to be kind of a, uh, something that grows and develops within Summersworth High School for a, a long time to come. Certainly there were kinks and, and, and bugs and things that we wanted to work out after the first time. But um, speaking with some of the students after, and you'll hear from a few of them, really just hits home as to why we do these kinds of things and just how important it is that we prioritize and emphasize the mental health of our students. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to reintroduce uh, Suzanne Weedy, and she's going to talk a little bit about TMHFA. Can I say my yeah, no, I can. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, um, school board, for inviting me to your meeting tonight. I really appreciate it. It's good to be here. Um, I'll reiterate what Chris said about the process and how we went through this. It did take a couple of years, but you did it. It's great. It's great. And um, uh, it was really great to be in your school district with another certified youth or teen mental health first aid instructor to bring this to the sophomores who are taking health this semester. And then we will continue in the spring for the second half, as you said. So what I'm going to do is just brief briefly give you some information about what teen mental health first aid is, why it's important, and a few aspects of implementation, and then just a couple of statistics of the results from this particular class that took it um, this fall. So and I'm also going to put my timer on because I know that your time, <laughs> I don't want to go over my time. So here we go. That might ring, though. Anyway, so I'll keep going. So Teen Mental Health First Aid um, is an evidence-based program. Um, it was developed in Australia and it brought, got brought to the United States uh, this module in 2018. They also have other modules like an adult and a youth version. Um, those are both for adults to work with either youth or other adults in recognizing and responding to someone in emotional distress. So teen mental health first aid is really important um, 
Why? Because one in five kids before they are the age of 18 will experience a mental health challenge. That's a high number, that's 20%. And I contend that that is actually low since the pandemic. I'm sure it's higher than that. So it's really important, These, our teenagers, you probably saw the Surgeon General's warning in this past year that they are in crisis. This is considered um, right up there as um, a public health issue, like say like underage drinking or things like that. So this is something we really need to pay attention to. Um, teen Mental Health First Aid, as I said, is um, it is a first aid course. It's like, has anybody taken CPR or first aid? Okay, it's like that. It's the first help you give someone when they might be experiencing a mental health challenge or a crisis. It is specific to teens, and the criteria is you have to change an entire grade level, so we've chosen the sophomore grade, to be able to teach these teens tools to recognize and respond to an emotional, uh, d emotional distress in a peer. And the reason why this, we found this was important is there's been studies and statistics that have shown that young people prefer to seek help from their friends or their family. Friends at 49%, girlfriend and boyfriend, kind of 32% they'd rather go, and 48% for parents. So it's a really high number that teens would rather talk to their friends about what might be going on. And if you know, <laughs> you probably can contend too, being um, this generation of youth, they talk about their stuff versus when we were kids, right? They talk about it, but they would prefer to go to their friends. So this is really so teaching them how to recognize and respond when their friend or someone else is in emotional distress and what to do, okay? Um, I'm not going to go through all these, but the learning objectives is really to, as I said, recognizing, responding to uh, someone in emotional distress or crisis, learning what the warning signs are of common mental health challenges. Mental health challenges, there are some common ones in youth, and kids might not know that. They have no idea, so we want to educate them. We want to give them some mental health literacy about what they might be seeing, what they might be feeling, what they might be observing in their friends. So we give them some information about that. We do talk about mental health crisis and we do get into suicide. Um, we do talk about how you actually ask if someone is thinking about suicide. We talk about these things. We also say these, some of these topics might be uh, elicit an emotional response. And we always have two instructors in the room. So if we do see someone, as well as a teacher with Mr. Burtis, but there's two instructors and a teacher, and we always have two people in the room because if someone needs a little bit of emotional help and they need to step out, we're gonna make sure that their emotional safety is okay. Either we'll go help them, the teacher, or we'll wa work with guidance or the nurse. Um, one huge tenant of this program is what you, what you might see in a friend who might be experiencing emotional distress, how you might approach them, what to say, and then how to get a trusted adult involved. So those are the really big tenants of this program. This is also another tenant is like, again, with first aid or CPR, you have steps. You do this and that and the other thing. Same kind of thing with teen mental health first aid. We have an action plan. We go through lots of different scenarios and we apply this action plan so kids actually have to do role playing. Not the favorite of everybody, but we go through it. <laughs> but we really talk about what, what do you see? What do you observe? What would you say? What would you do? How would you help your friends? And we your friendship is important. We do say, when you learn these things, you have the potential to potentially save a life. And that is really the truth of it, so. Um, one thing that's important, and, and Chris talked a little bit about this, is we needed to prepare the community for this. Um, you know, everyone comes from different backgrounds in terms of their mental health. Everyone has grown up with their own messages regarding mental health and mental illness or suicide and things like that. You have to sort of come around to that and started to educate people, like this is a health challenge. Our kids are feeling the effects of COVID and the pandemic, and they are experiencing high levels of mental health challenges or potential crisis. So we need to prepare the community, whether it's the school community or the community at large. So as Chris said, we did um, a presentation. I did a presentation for the whole school district, I don't know, a year and a half ago, something like that, to tell them a little bit about teen mental health first aid. Um, and then as we prepare for the class like we did, um, for this fall, we sent letters home to the parents of the kids that would be taking this class. We prepared the kids prior to the class with an informational sort of PowerPoint. Um, the school needs to have a certain percentage of their staff trained in youth mental health first aid, which is a complementary program to this. Um, we also um, do talk about that we would really, we want to prepare the community and in the spring, we're going to start offering youth mental health first aid classes to the community because those people that are versed in this 
can then be all part of the solution and be on the same page and saying the same message and understanding exactly what um, this team mental health first aid program is all about so they can support our youth and be that trusted adult if need be. Um, I have to mention too that this program has, is free. It's free for the next four years at least because of a grant that community partners um, received through a federal grant from SAMHSA. Um, a couple things we also talk about after every class. We talk about who are your trusted adults in your, in your sphere. It might not be the youth's parent. It might be their friend's parent. It might be their sibling. It might be their cousin. I always say it wasn't my mom. It was my aunt or my cousin, that kind of thing. And that is the case. It might not be the parent or caregiver. So who else could be in their circle of support? We talk about that. Remind them. Who are your trusted adults? Some kids might not even have one. So we have crisis lines. At least there is something else they can, someone else they can call or they can do. They have the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, the text lines, as well as the New Hampshire Rapid Response Line. And we talk about that. And we encourage, although it's all kind of the bane of our existence in some respects, put it in your phone. Put it in your phone. Put it in there. So you don't want to have to fumble for that number. Another thing we do after every class is we do want to make sure the emotional safety of these youth are, uh, is okay. So when they leave the craft classroom, before they leave the classroom, classroom, they do an exit ticket. We want to know, how are you feeling? Would you like someone to check in with you now? Would you like someone to check in with you in a week? Do you have any questions? These, then, these tickets after every class, and there's five sessions, five classes over five days or ten days, however we spread it out, after each class, go down to the guidance counselor, and then those guidance counselors follow up with those kids. Sometimes the kids say, I don't have a concern about me, but I have a concern about my friend. We send those down as well. And it's the role then of the guidance counselors then to talk and to make sure they connect with those students. We want to make sure, again, that their emotional safety is good. Um, this is a couple summers worth, um, just a couple of data points for summers worth. One of the questions we asked at the end of training is, uh, I should, the question is, I should reach out and express my concerns to peers and friends that might be experiencing a mental health or substance use challenge. And uh, it goes from one is low to five is high. And so we can see that over 60% agreed that this is definitely strongly agreed that this is um, this statement is true. And the next one is, is I should at I should take action to help a peer or friend to address their mental health or substance use challenge. Over 75% also agree that w strongly with this statement. So those are a couple of just quick data points that we got from the kids that took it this fall. Um, the idea is, again, we train an entire grade level in this, so they are on the same wavelength. They ca we can only train either 10th, 11th, or 12th graders because of age appropriateness. Um, but eventually, like uh, as an example, Lower High School now has their seniors, their juniors, and their sophomore class are now just starting to do it. So three grade levels, and when kids come out of this, they are considered certified in teen mental health first aid. They can put it on their resume, um, and it's just, it's a great program for them, um, but really, again, I can't reiterate that they potentially have the ability to save a life. So that's Teen Mental Health First Aid. Does anybody have any questions? Or I don't know. I don't want this to well, go. I think we're going to do the video. Oh, yeah, go do that, and I'm going to stop this so it doesn't go off. Thank you for letting me speak. You're not going. Yes, you're oh, not I'm not going. going. <laughs> Just three, it's I'm a three-minute video. It's very good. OK. <laughs> I'll put this up real quick. So I, I should say thank you to uh, Mr. Burtis, the teacher, and the kids who were involved in this. The role play is a bit difficult for high schoolers sometimes, but they were good sports about it. Uh, and also thank you to Mr. Rogers for putting this all together. Good evening, school board. I am Dan Burtis, the health teacher at Summersworth High School, and these are some students from my class. Before they share their thoughts and takeaways from the teen mental health first aid course, I'd like to briefly go over what our curriculum has covered and how it pertains to this new addition to our course. To start the year, we began studying mental health and the different aspects of this subject. Our classes covered how to communicate effectively and what different types of communication are acceptable in certain circumstances. We went over resolving conflicts and through role playing scenarios and interactive classroom learning, students were exposed to new thought patterns. Lastly, we studied how to resist peer pressure and refusal skills, and if those failed and mistakes were made, who in the community were trusted adults that students could turn to for help. This, this connected nicely with the teen mental health first aid curriculum, where the focus was on identifying when a friend is developing or actively engaged in a mental health crisis. Lessons were devoted to describing how to talk to a friend in these circumstances and when to involve a trusted adult. 
while also being provided resources in the community and helplines to reach out to when in a crisis. I'd like to open it up to the students and let them explain in their own words what the experience has meant to them. One important thing I learned from team mental health was her recovery position, and now I'm going to demonstrate it. So, you <laughs> see someone and they're like passed out or whatever. So, we bring one of them across their stomach, one up by the head. And then you move this leg up and over, and then you flip them like that. So, then if they were to throw up, they would throw up on the floor and they wouldn't be on their back, so they couldn't show come with their leg. Hi guys, today we are going to be showing you something we learned in the teen mental health unit, which is called the recovery position. So, first, our friend Isabella here is unconscious from being at a party, so we have to check to see if she is awake. Isabella, are you awake? She's not. So then, you're going to search her body for any sharp objects that could harm anyone. Okay, she has no sharp objects on her body. So now, we are going to put her in the recovery position and have someone call the cops. <laughs> First, we're going to put her arm up and then her arm over. And as we're doing this, we're going to tell someone to call, call the cops. Yo, help me now, please. I need help. We're going to prop her leg up and, and make sure it's your, the arm that you cross over the body, the knee is going to be the opposite. To that. So she doesn't roll over. Now this way, it will prevent her from choking on the throw up if she throws up. Yeah. Sir, That's what I learned. Cool uh, one thing I learned about is making sure to talk to your friends uh, if something is off and make sure that they're okay and everything at home is okay. And if it's not, make sure to talk to a trusted adult or somebody that they trust. One thing that I learned from Team Mental Health is the suicide hotline number 988 is one of the many resources that you have. You can have also multiple multiple people help you it's very important to surround yourself with people who have your mental health in their best interests people that you can talk to about your struggles never be afraid to tell or correct someone mm -hmm. if they're wrong look ask listen help your friends your, your friendship, friendship is important i ate that up <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. So that's all we had. If there are any questions for either myself or Suzanne, we'd be happy to answer them. Great. Yes? I don't have a question, but can I say thank you so much? I'm thrilled at these programs. This is amazing. It's also nice to have federal funding, yeah. you know, also, um, and targeting the sophomores who will just carry that with them and very well, sp you know, spoken um, students. <laughs> thank you. Great. I think we're going to go Tom, Car uh, yeah, McCallion, Clark, Tierney, Wentworth. Okay. Um, great job on th this whole process is awesome. You said about the grant, though. You feel confident that the grant will continue, though, right? Because that's what we really. It's here for four more years. Okay, so um, the grants for four more years, and then after that, you you'll be able to re up or. Well, that's yeah, that's something we'll have to look at. But um, there are funders in the area that I've actually used prior to us using that grant um, yeah. for Gilbert High School. I won't say them out loud, but I have a pretty good idea that um, I, I can't speak for it for sure. I, yep. But you know, in four years, we can revisit and and um, and see about funding for this. It's really only twelve dollars and ninety-five cents right now for the manual for kids. Oh wow! Times times how many kids? Right. So so it's not like it's thousands of dollars. It's okay. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yep. I want to say thank you for bringing this to um, Summers Wear. I think this is great. I do have some quick questions. I know you said quickly um, you didn't do or include the freshman class. That, um, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, Mental Health First Aid is actually um, an evidence-based program that comes from the National Council of Mental we Health and Wellbeing. They've changed their name recently, so I always get it a little bit mixed up. And they've deemed this program only suitable for 10, 11, and 12th graders just because of the nature of the content. Um, it has been, people have come to me and say, geez, we should do something for even like middle school. And that might be in the works, but this is a big national company that right now, this is all the, this is what they have for modules. And it's just geared for 10, 11, and 12th graders. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. And I just had one more quick question about um, the training surveys. Um, it had like five parts. Was that for the five different days? Oh, yes. So okay. it's 
it's actually six 45 minute sessions. Okay. So we combine five and six because it's kind of, they're kind of quick, like six is pretty quick. So yes, and so we meet, so we had like, if it's two blocks of health in a day, we'd meet two you know, I'd be there for 45 minutes and then another class for 45 minutes doing the training and it's five sessions. Okay. So, w so we did it every other week, every other, pretty much every other day over a two week period in September. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Tierney Wentworth and Demers. Hi, thank you. Um, this is this is really great, and I, it's it's really um, I don't know. Just need to see the kids get in, get on board with it. I hadn't seen it yet. Thanks. Yeah, for <laughs> um, I was a l I was surprised. I, I didn't expect that recovery position with the drinking at the party. So explain how that fits in with the whole mental health. Because when you say mental health challenges, I was going right to depression, suicide. I was I wasn't thinking. Um, so I'm drinking too much. So I'm just curious. We would use substance use disorder or substance use oh, okay. disorder mental health challenge. Oh, okay. Mental health challenge. And so we, we put that in there. So we talk about, like, what are the warning signs? What are the okay. factors of someone? Also because people might be using substances if they, if they have a mental health challenge. So it's oh, okay. sort of related. So we use the p recovery position, you can imagine. Yeah. High school kids oh, might yeah. be experimenting with substances. Yeah. They need to know that recovery position because literally it could save someone's life and yeah. they don't aspirate on someone's, you know, on the, you know if they, if they – um, vomit yeah so we actually have the kids pair up in twos and threes in the classroom and they go through all the process yeah yeah and we teach them and I've actually had to use it in my life and I use that example and oh. I it, it worked and I saw the person vomit I'm like wow I just like that could have gone a different way yeah you know so um, it was really it was really great for them to do that and it's funny you know they get yeah they get silly they get them up and moving though but right I think it's really important at this particular age to have that information. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, thank you for explaining. I wasn't even going to substance yeah, abuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we, we put that yeah. in with the whole, it's not like, you know, don't do drugs, that kind yeah. of thing, but we actually talk about, like, warning signs. Of, of addiction and, and stuff, also, yeah. yeah. Um, the only other question I had was uh, you mentioned the um, checking in on the, the students' emotional safety after each of these sessions. So is there, um, is this the research showing that, that, kids maybe can almost be triggered like if you're, you're talking about this stuff and then they start to kind of get in touch with something that maybe they're not they don't realize that they were feeling or something or yeah, because kids actually they don't they don't one thing one of the things we talk about is mental health challenges are common mm -hmm. unfortunately mm -hmm. and they might not know that they might be living with that quietly and suffering in silence right mm -hmm. so um yes and so then that might bring something up in a classroom. That's why we need to prepare the community, whether it be the school or the community at large, that this class is going on. Um, it would be a, a great thing. We, we should continue to have teachers go through youth mental health first aid to have eventually like a whole school district trained in that. It takes mm -hmm. time, though. It's mm -hmm. like a six to eight hour class. Yeah. So that's something that has to be worked into the schedule. But um, yeah, it's just because you just don't know where someone's coming from or what experiences they might have had or what, are they've, what, are th what they've observed or mm -hmm. what they've Yep. Great. Thank you. Yep. Um, so I have my master's in social work, and for as long as I can remember, mental health has been a buzzword and kind of important and everything like that. Um, but it, having it actually supported and presented, and it's not just lip service, like things are happening and things are being done. Um, and so that's so important. And I really commend um, your your school, Chris, um, uh, of just staying, staying the course, because there are going to be challenges. There are going to be things that you know, some people are going to get triggered. This is not super easy work, um, but it's absolutely needed. And um, so the fact that um, you and your staff were able to stick with it and um, really get to the other side and hopefully um, we'll have lots of positive stories from all of this. So thank you so much. And thank you for um, bringing it to all of us. And I'm so excited in the fall or spring. I'll be there. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Diversion and Marsh, yeah. Hi. I just also wanted to say thank you. Um, this goes really nicely with what I know the majority of this board has really been focused on in our tenure, which is mental health is health of our students, and it belongs being addressed instead of shied away from in the buildings. And w I couldn't be happier that this is being put out there. I am a licensed clinician as well. And 
also trained in adult first aid, um, mental health first aid. And I just wanted to take the opportunity to just encourage any m person that has contact with youth or works in our district or is a parent to, when it's offered, become trained in this because I use what I've learned from that, not necessarily as a clinician in my office, but to give the language to other parents or people who you know come in contact with kids who might struggle. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just invaluable. Um, it's never the ones you see coming that will haunt you. And this weeds out the ones you don't see coming. And um, I'm very grateful for it to be here for as long as we can possibly have it um, because it's right where it needs to be. And uh, we'll continue to add it to our wish list, I guess. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Marsh and then Tierney. Yep, Marsh and then Tierney. Yep. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. And uh, thank it's you for being here. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's okay. Vice chair person. That's, that's okay. what it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Um, I appreciated the training that you helped navigate um, through the city of Rochester. I participated in the um, mental health first aid training um, as a director um, for uh, city employees. Uh, I think that, and that was very uh, beneficial. Uh, to myself uh, and the other directors and managers. Um, so I, I experienced it um, from that role. Uh, I think most of us would agree that mental health is the foundation to ac academic success. Uh, I, I think you know, clearly it's difficult and challenging uh, to focus on that when resources are stretched. I think we all recognize that. Um, but I do really appreciate, I think, the, the real strides that are being made. Um, I think the comment by board member, or should I say counselor, <laughs> board member Wentworth, um, was um, regarding the lip service. You know, I think, you know, that, that hit it on the head there that, you know, it, it's become a bud, buzzword sometimes or phrase of mental health. Um, and but what does it mean? What, what, what resources are being devoted to it, what efforts are being devoted to it. Um, and it's nice to see that, uh, that these efforts and, um, that are real and, um, and I'm hoping that, I'm confident um, that this was just, it's part of the continuous improvement of our overall system. Mm -hmm. So thank you. So I just wanted to clarify, so you said in the spring this will be offered to the community or just Right, so we're going to do the rest of the sophomore class. Yep. And, then and then I'm going to be working with a community member to actually bring youth mental health first aid classes or adult mental health first aid classes. It's just really the, those are, both of those classes are for adults. Yeah. So youth is for adults that might be working with youth. Yeah. And adult, like what Todd was mentioning is that yep. that is for adults that work also with adults. So it's the adult mental health first aid class or the youth mental health first aid class. So I'll be working with someone in the community to bring those classes for free to Summersworth in the spring. Okay, so um, for people, and sorry, I just want to make sure. I, so for people who may work with um, teens in other, yeah. uh, in other settings, could come and, yeah, yeah, parents or okay, or like in a lot of church groups or something. I'm thinking, okay, not yeah. just work with them in contact yeah, or concerned. Okay, yeah. okay, no, this is great. All right, and all right, perfect, love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And that'll be free too on Carver Rendered Grant as well. Thank you. I think in my ten years of six years, if you took the amount of times I said mental health, it would be a long um, clip worth. And um, I won't bore with the with my advocacy and my my personal kind of commitment to this is here and it's staying. And I just I was able to look at the. Um, the uh, teen mental health first aid uh, kits or the, the, the book booklets, as well as our health books are were phenomenal. I was so impressed by them. I'm always impressed by our students' kind of willingness to um, show up and speak and learn this. And even though it kind of can be silly and they're young, it sticks. And I think the more we speak about it, the more we say, not that just, okay, this is important, but coming together as a community to be trained to continue that um, conversation is just is just so vital. I couldn't thank you both enough. I'm glad it's happening. Thank you so much.
All right. I'm going to go into policy adoption. Um, we have one policy for first reading. It's JLCF, student wellness. Do I have a um, motion to read this by title only? I make a motion to read policy by Might title only. Mm -hmm. okay. I second. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, board member Tierney. Okay. Um, policy JLCF, student wellness. And can you just give a brief update on why we update? It's a very small change to the wellness policy. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. So the, the change that we made basically had to do with parents, uh, guardians who would might bring in treats or snacks <laughs> for the students um, for birthdays or other celebrations. Um, the policy basically had this wording that was very strict that said that you couldn't bring in anything that didn't fall under these smart, was it smart standards? Standards, smart standards. Yeah, smart standards, which is a USDA program. Um, and so the wellness committee in the district brought it forth, right, with, uh, with, this, with a recommended change to basically broaden the language to say, hey, um, you can, you know, it, it, it's a good idea. We encourage you to follow these smart standards, um, but you are, you know, um, so we encourage you to do it, um, and it's also would be nice if you could provide a healthy alternative. I think is kind of where we where we left that. There's also um, the burden is on the district to provide a list of healthy snacks. That would be, you know. Not approved necessarily, but just encourage about you know. educating on healthy snacks. Yeah. But cupcakes are allowed in our school. Cupcakes are allowed. Yeah, there's the bottom line. Yes, Got cupcakes. It. You can bring cupcakes. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? All right. First read. We'll see it in our November meeting. Uh, agenda item six point two is our policy ACN, which is the nursing mothers' um, accommodations. Do I have a motion to accept this policy as presented? I motion to accept this policy as presented. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on this policy? All right. All in favor of adopting uh, policy ACN, nursing mothers' accommodations, say aye. 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 Okay. All opposed? Okay. ACN is adopted and will be updated. Um, new business. There's no new business, but I'd like to informally um, mention something that uh, isn't an action for today, but kind of a discussion point, and I'll turn it over to the superintendent. Right. Um, I think it's important that we see um, school school committee or school board members uh, at school functions. And so one of the ideas I want to throw out to you, uh, and it's been done in other districts that I've worked in, I'm looking to see if there's interest on the s school board to have a couple of folks assigned to each school uh, to attend a variety of different events that are taking place in the schools. Um, so for example, you have nine members, perhaps three and you don't have to go to every event, but you're welcome to go into the schools, talk with Chris and, and others, uh, and maybe go in to see some events. And then at the middle school, perhaps have two, um, Maplewood two, and um, uh, Idlehurst two. Uh, so I'm just throwing that out there. We'd like to welcome you. You can think about it. Um, but if you want to come back in a future meeting and let us know schools that you'd like to, it's kind of a liaison role. It's not meant to be you're going into, and I don't anticipate this happening, but it, it's not, I don't envision it being where you go in and micromanage the administration. It's more simply for you to come in, see what's happening, talk with folks, and, and get a sense of what's going on in the schools. And if you have a child in a particular school, you might want to go to that one. So does that make sense? That's kind of where we're, and I spoke we're to this. <laughs> or not. Or not. <laughs> right, or not, right, or not. Uh, and I, and it, I did talk to the administrative team about it, and they're open to it. And so I think it would be, you know, a good collaborative um, process for all of us. That's during the day. Sorry. Yes, Sorry. it could be during the day. So if there's an event going on during the day at the school, um, I'm trying to think of a recent event. We had, uh, I think there was um, a group at the middle school that came in, and um, oh gosh, they were, I think it was a, a health related. Uh, presentation and if you wanted to come to that you could
if that makes sense. Yeah, or or if there's an evening event. An evening so what, event. I, what I what I'm envisioning is kind of like being on an email of like events at a at a certain school. So, um, it and not having this be like a time time uh, requirement, but just kind of to be able to go into school. Just by a show of hands, what what members have not been into every school? No, I don't think. I haven't been to every any school. Okay, yeah, not to been, everyone, right? Yeah. So first plan is kind of to do a tour of in for with building and grounds and this would be more of a, a chance to kind of just get to know a school so if that's during the day or if it's kind of like an evening event um, to loop you in for through those communications and if you want to have a particular school just let me know and then we'll we'll start the process so it's more of an informal thing where you just wanted to just put it out there yep. yeah I, I think this is a great idea and I just had a suggestion that maybe we also consider having um, the initial sort of assignments be um, like for a certain time limit and not necessarily the entire term of two years. Right, and well, that yeah. way we all sort of rotate so we all get an opportunity to be a, a liaison in all the different schools. Yeah. Great. I think that would be a good. Yeah. 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 Absolutely heard. Yep. Much. Yeah, I like the idea too. I will say that I think that, um, you know, for the school teams um, just to be mindful and as a reminder that you know, as individual me school board members, we are not um, in an authority sort of role. As individual school board members, we have no uh, power over teachers or, right. or authority, I should say, or administrators um, at the um, at the, the building levels. Um, w it is only as a body, as a governing body. Um, so I think that's important to remember. Um, if we are to do this in this capacity, for them to be mindful of that. Spoken like a yeah. true city department. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Uh, just let me know. Just let me know what, what building and we'll make it work. Again, it's informal. It's really just to kind of be looped into the happenings at the school and not going right. anywhere. Yeah, come in and see kids, see staff. Uh, yep. I don't Perfect. envision it being where you come in and you sit in the classroom and observe instruction. It's more come in, you know, meet with the principal. They can take you on a tour if they w if he or she wants. And, you know, if there's an event coming up, they'll keep you in the loop and you come in and have some fun. Perfect. Um, yep. So seeing that we're a couple weeks away from an election and about half of us are coming back, but well, there might be some new faces on the board. Is this something we're going to wait until the new board is seated? No, we can no. start. We can start. We can start now. I think there's some good things going on in the schools and just kind of okay. a, you know, from events, playoffs, okay. anything, you know. And, and and again, you're assigned to a school, but there's something happening at another school. We just haven't really been in um, all too much. So if there's anything like that, it's just kind of an, a loop in to all the great stuff going on in the school and to be a part of it. All right, there's no old or unfinished business this evening. We have some future meeting dates. Um, November 6th is our budget and revenue, 5.30 at the SAU. Uh, November 13th, policy committee meeting at 5.45 at the SAU office. No November um, 14th, the education programs and community outreach here at City Hall at 5.45. And our next meeting is November 14th. Um, that includes our, bu bu our budget presentation. Um, for the SAU. Yes. yes, it's for the SAU. That's we have to cool. develop that budget early because of uh, Rollinsford, which is an SB2 mm -hmm. uh, town, and, uh, and their time frame is quite quick. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's what that, the purpose of that is. Yep. Yep, this is our last meeting before the election, so um, you still have to come after that. So we can. Any comments by visitors this evening? I do not think there are any, but we may. All right, seeing none, comments by board members. Yeah, uh, yep, oh, oh boy, oh, let me, okay. Uh, let's do Clark and then just work down the line this way. I just want to take a minute and um, thank our community for coming out um, last night and speaking with the city council. And I also want to take a minute um, to thank, to thank um, city council for, unanimously um, approving the, yeah, the adequacy aid, we appreciate that. Um, I am so, um, I wanna say shocked, but not shocked, but like honored to be a part of this school board and all the good things that we have done and all the things that we have left to do. Um, I think that we have some good things here and I'm happy to be a part, that's it, thanks. 
McCallion, I'll have you go before I switch on over. Uh, no, I'd like to thank this, the uh, council for what they did. I can bring my props like Mr. Witham, but um, <laughs> no, I, I think the argument is that, you know, when they talked about the, the, the ceiling, and I think that from their point of view, it's just like well, we're behind closed doors seeing all the money that we've had to put into the, uh, so I say all the CIPs kicking the can down the road, money that's not in, got to make decisions, don't have money, you can't get these things done, you're trying to keep trying to get as much money as you can to do these things it takes that process it takes that time that's the thing I think um, if you look at some of the councilmen there were when we had these joint council meetings there were options of you know bonding because if you bond everything you can get everything done at once and that's something that may be going forward in the future there's something that you know the council and the school board can work together and try to find the you know that key point of fixing everything and just having it out of one bond it makes it a little bit easier for us, it makes it a little bit easier for them, and it's just, it's, like I said, the money comes out of the same pool, we all know that, but at least we can get everything fixed. So that's the, the tough part about when you look at all the schools, because again, I mean, I'm sure there's most of us that have gone to school here, <laughs> and we look at like middle school, those bathrooms are the same since in the 90s. So that, that's the problem right there. That's where we need to kind of get that all collaborated, bonded, done and just move forward I think that would be a great thing for the city and, and the school so but again I thank the council for all their their work on that and great everybody get out and vote I saw all your hands at the same time so I'm gonna start with the mirrors and work this way thank you I um, thoroughly enjoyed listening to our students talk or at least I think we had one student talk last night um, but just the community's paying attention um, and that kind of goes nicely into my next plug, which is elections matter. We've seen it prove so much in the last couple of years. Elections matter. So get out, vote. Um, I know our community is paying attention. I also just wanted to point out they're paying attention so much. That's why they knew. Actually, I think it was Councilman Gibson himself said, I don't know why people think we weren't going to approve this. It's like, well, you voted no at the Finance Committee, Councillor Gibson, so you didn't want to approve this, and we're reacting to that. This isn't out of nowhere reactions. This is a community that pays attention, and I hope it continues to, and I hope that the voting mirrors the feedback and the energy in the room that we had last night. Um, I think is great, and I may not be sitting here, but you won't be the done hearing from me, that's for sure. But get out and vote, and I'm very excited to see um, what we can knock off our CIP, because these things are on the to-do list, um, not on a wish list. So I just wanted to really clarify that, too. Thank you. Um, I'll start out with the um, adequacy funds. Um, I watched the meeting, actually sitting in the parking lot, waiting for my son to get out of driver's ed last night. And um, I was very impressed with the amount of people that, uh, residents and, and others that, that attended. Um, you know, I expected process, and there was process. I expected thought, and there was thought. I expected listening, including to the community members who were here, uh, and others who were not here that um, reached out to counselors, um, and uh, there was listening. I expected discussion, and there was some discussion, and I appreciate the final result of overall approval. Um, Councilor Austin, I appreciate your, your, your support. Um, for the adequacy funds um, so and I think and I also I want to thank um, chair Larson for her um, advocacy and your uh, collaborative uh, approach and tone um, with this process uh, that wasn't lost on me and it's something that I appreciate and uh, I have no doubt that that helped um, um, with the final vote so thank you. Um, also, 
I want to thank the superintendent um, for he handed out um, uh, a memo um, clarifying uh, who, which was something that was asked for, um, clarifying who would be uh, the designee uh, uh, in charge in the event of an emergency, uh, clarifying that. Uh, I think that's something that's very important. Um, you know, I think throughout history, we, we, we have learned of events you know, where people were pointing to each other, not knowing who, who was second in charge uh, during, again, in cases of an emergency when the superintendent is not available. Um, or, you know, or folks you know, again, pointing to each other, not either not wanting to be in charge or people believing they're in charge when they shouldn't be. Um, so this is an important clarification. I appreciate that. Um, and yes, um, I, I wish, um, uh, I urge people uh, to vote as if it matters because it does. Uh, and you know, I'm, I am still, you know, I'm a little corny in this way, I guess, but you know, I'm still in awe of our democratic process and our ability to vote hasn't always been that way. Uh, and we're still part of this great experiment and I, um, I hope it continues. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I, yeah, last night it was a packed room. I don't know if I've actually seen it like that before in my time here, so that was really amazing. Um, I do want to thank the council as well. Um, I want to, I, I appreciate the fact that the councilors all listened to all of the comments, and the comments were, I mean, they really, there, were, there was a variety of, of, of um, uh, just statements and opinions brought forth. Um, and I appreciate that the counselors, several of them voiced some concerns, um, but ultimately um, allowed, or, or it allowed for that trust, it, you know, but it voiced the concerns, right, which we, which we, I think we all took and we all heard, um, but also ultimately just said, you know, well, we trust the board, you know, the district to, um, to make good use of that money. So I, I appreciate that. Um, I specifically would like to call out Councillor Witham just because he had such a clear way of explaining everything. Um, I, for me, it really helped me a lot. And I just, I think that's a gift that he has. He can just really kind of clarify that. Um, and I appreciate him um, uh, speaking to the, the point about um, uh, uh, that we didn't have a, a wish list, that it was just, you know, it, it wasn't, there were things that we felt we still needed, right? Um, I loved that we had a student uh, lead the pledge, lead us in the pledge tonight. That just, that made my night. I loved that. Um, and that leads to my last thing because we're, the next time we meet will be after Veterans Day. So I just wanted to just say thank you to all the veterans out there. I think we should thank them every day, but just, you know, since we will not see them until, or have an opportunity until after Veterans Day happens. Um, just thank you. God bless America. So, yeah, last night was awesome. Thank you for, um, you know, it's, it's nice to see the process and, um, and that people are paying attention throughout everything. And I really enjoy, is it Pepin who sits right here? Yeah. Um, when some person talked about the bathrooms being the same as w from middle school. And then he said, well, there's the, I'm seeing here in your CIP that it's actually, you know, so it's, it's nice to, um, as, as um, a school board member, Councilor Marsh says, like, what's around the corner? Like, we've looked around the corner. We've, we've got plans, not unlimited funds, but we've got plans. So, um, Thank you for the presentation tonight, and I think it's an awesome idea to be a liaison. Um, I'll, I'll, you guys can see me in your schools because I'm going all over the place. So, thank you. We'll, we'll let you know. <laughs> It'll be communicated. Yes, Board Member Brown. I don't know. Did I did I beat Barbara in uh, responding to which school I wanted? <laughs> but anyway, we'll make it all work. Okay. All right. Um, Thank you, everybody, for the presentations today and, and being here. I do appreciate that we are starting the budget process, uh, the presentation with the next uh, next month, because 
the budget process and me being new to the school board, I felt time crunched, and so any, you know, exce um, sneak peek at the budget earlier, sooner, um, I appreciate that time so that we have time to look at it. Yeah. I am also proud of everyone who came out last night uh, and spoke uh, in front of our honorable mayor and city council members. I was proud of the students who spoke individually. I was proud of the parents who spoke on behalf of the students who were um, too shy to actually speak. And for, th for the parents to come out, that is just such a, it's an effort, a really big effort in their busy lives. I mean, those of us that chose to, you know, give back to the community by serving on, you know, various boards and uh, et cetera, you know, that's our choice. But when an issue arises that's such importance and they show up and speak, I was so proud uh, of them for showing up. I was proud of the teachers. Uh, I was proud of the community members. I was proud of the council uh, members who supported um, uh, 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 the, uh, the funds to the school. I was also proud of the members who expressed reservation. I don't know if the uh, students still read uh, the peer pressure book, uh, Jumping the Nail, um, but peer pressure is lifelong. And you witnessed last night people bucking the tide, the, you know, the sea change tide of, of the, um, the room it was very much in support of, of uh, voting in favor of the funding. And those who expressed reservation had to, exp had to have some courage to speak their, their minds and their con concerns about it. And everyone was respectful, and I was just so proud of the respect that everyone showed for that dialogue that we had. Um, to me, I'm a big fan of vetting multiple issues so that you can hear what the person hears uh, from you. Because in our zealous advocacy, sometimes you mm -hmm. can forget communication's a two-way mm -hmm. and that what the person heard may, ne may not be what you intended. Mm -hmm. And it's always good to accept that feedback because it, even if it's not how you are thinking, because you may need to tweak your messaging. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just, I was very, very proud of everybody and the, and the process mm -hmm. um, that what we witnessed last night was just, you know, what, I guess democracy, you know, what our vetting process should look like. So um, I appreciate everyone's time and thank you for letting me make my comments and uh, participate in our community because it is amazing. Well, I am grateful for you all because with all that being said, and I'll be brief, um, it's an hour past, but that's okay. Um, I'm grateful for our community. I'm grateful for all of you. Thank you for your advocacy and what you say. What a great um, words by school board representatives that you want to be representing your school. I'm very proud of our community. I think that pride and um, respect go a long way. Hopefully that will continue uh, throughout this year and into the future. Um, yeah, happy, you know, kind of, our next meeting is November 14th, so it seems like a while away, which it is. So, you know, you know, want to recognize Veterans Day for, for this, and then we will only have um, three more meetings uh, left, in the, left in the year. So, with that, uh, thank you all, thank you City Council, and we are going into non-public this evening. Per November 7th. Uh, vote on November 7th if you live in Summer, Summersworth. <laughs> or vote wherever you are. <laughs> yeah. Wherever you are and you're 18. Please vote. Do I have a motion to go into a non public per 91A32, B, E, and J? Motion to go into non public per 91A, uh, uh, B, B, E, and J. B E J. B E A N J. B E J. Yep. Second. Second. All right. I will do a roll call. Uh, Demers. Yes. yes. Uh, Marsh. Yes. Tierney. Yes. Wentworth. Yes. Brown. Yes. Clark. Yes. Hackworth. Yes. McCallion. 